Hello and welcome to the Shake It Up show, the show that looks at all things Berry AFC. I'm your host Nick and I have been away for a, a fairly long time again. Apologies, I wasn't um, transported back into the 70s despite my uh, my shirt. Nope, I have had Covid which has been lovely and then a storm unit blew my roof off and then there's been so many matches that have been postponed and lads back in training and I'm not been able to get in here to do the show so apologies but i've got a few bits of housekeeping to uh to do so without any uh without any delays so uh on the 22nd of april we have our player of the season awards that's for both the women's and the men's team you can pick up a ticket for 15 pounds it's at the village hotel very swanky um so yeah 15 pounds and that's for the 22nd of april uh, to celebrate our season with with the men's and the women's players. And then, hang on, let me go down to my notes here. This Saturday, uh, we have Garstang at home. And to celebrate the uh, Her Game 2 uh, campaign, which is going on at the minute, we are giving both girls and boys under the age of 16 the opportunity to come and see us for free. So you can pick a free ticket up if you are under 16. Go to the website for details, www.berryafc.uk. And also, the women are in quarterfinal uh, Manchester Premier Cup action against Mosley at Seal Park this Sunday. So if you can get down to that as well, more details are on the website, www.berryafc.uk. No, Gosh, I've got it then. Okay, back with it. So it was the seventies. You can see it's the seventies. You know I, they didn't have these www dots then. So you know that's it's like life on Mars. But I'm uh, but I'm back and uh, yeah, you can go to websites or you can follow us on our social media, which is hashtag well, at Berry AFC uh, official Berry. A oh my God, I'm so out of practice. At official Berry AFC or um, TikToks and you find you know it by now. I don't need to go back into it anyway. Big interview today. Um, we've had a bit of a sticky patch. Um, and, you know, after our first league defeat against Blackpool, and then we've had Chatterton and, and Darwin, which maybe didn't go our way. And then we played Campion at the time of recording this, which was last night. Uh, again, another one that didn't go our way. We've had a generally good season. But uh, we've got Harry Brazell, who's going to tell us a little bit about how the lads are bouncing back this Saturday against Garstang, don't forget, you can get in for free if you're under 16. Uh, go to the website, www.berryafc.uk for more details. Uh, Harry's going to be telling us a bit about um, how the lads can bounce back and hopefully pick up three points on Saturday. So without any further ado, please welcome to the Shaking Up show, Brazil. It's just like watching Brazil. Harry Brazil. Hello, Harry. Let's go. Right, okay, welcome to the show, Harry Brazell. Hello, Harry. How's it going, mate? All right. How are you doing? You okay, pal? So oh, uh, you played last night. Well, uh, well, well. That uh, as we're recording this, we're recording this on the Thursday. So you played last night. We'll have a little chat about that later. We might have a few, a bit, a few bumps and bruises and sore legs. Um, but let's get to know you a little bit. Obviously, we're, we're coming towards the kind of business end of the season. So tell us a bit about about you, where where your football journey began, and how you ended up at Berry AFC. Yeah, cool. So. Um... Yeah, my journey began, I grew up in Bolton, so just uh, playing, you know, amateur football through five, six, seven years old and so on. Um, and then kind of, you know, when a lot of lads were getting snapped up, I'm thinking, what, you know, when's my call coming? And, and it never did really, so. Same, uh, same, here, same here, mate, never came. <laughs> yeah. I, unfortunately, I peaked at 12 years old. Oh, well, did you? Uh, yeah, that was it. And and after that, it was it was the the drinks and the women and the drugs and it all just got a bit too much. But uh, oh, yeah. that was at 12 years old. But anyway, <laughs> on, back to you, Harry, go on. Some child of that, mate. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, so kind of fast forward a load of time, went to university wanted to continue to play football. I actually chose the university I went to based on the kind of sports and the football team. So when I went and studied at Leeds Met, who had a really good football team at the time, uh, managed to get in after, you know, after the trials and whatnot and played regularly 
throughout the three, four years I spent at uni for the uni team. And it was a, it was a good level. It was university football students playing. So it wasn't mm. necessarily uh, men's football because you're all kind of similar age and similar standard. But um, it was a good level. Um, and I, yeah, I played well there and whatnot. I had a few offers to kind of play the semi-pro level whilst I was in Leeds, um, but chose not to just because just more time really because you play you're studying you're playing for the uni team and then you want to have a, a laugh and go out as well so you want to think about university exactly mate so you want to make the most of the experience so after uni graduated and then I was like right well I don't want to stop playing football let's let's carry on let's find a team so I played for just a, a bit of a I think they were in like the West Lanks League for a team in Bolton again uh, played a few months there and was yeah was doing well standing out should I say and then uh, got a call from Winsford United uh, they're playing in Northwest Counties Prem so I went there for a bit and thinking yeah this is all right I'm kind of standing out again really and I'll just kind of fast forward a little bit but I was I was I was due to actually move to Australia I was going to live in Australia for a bit hopefully play a bit of footy out there in Melbourne and then about a week before I was meant to fly out, I'd had a leaving party with the lads, the rest of it. So all and, your tickets were booked, everything, everything was yeah, booked? Yeah, it was all, all sorted. I had like accommodation and stuff. Um, and a week, literally a week before I was meant to go and, you know, see what see what there was to offer over there, I got a phone call off um, Jim Gannon, the Stockport County manager at the time. And we'd played him in the cup the previous week. And I had a decent game. And uh, he said, he's really interested. Can you come down to training? I want to have a look at you, blah, blah, blah. blah. And uh, I thought, well, I've not got anything to lose. If he doesn't have me, then I'm going Australia. If he does, then I've got a decision to make. Anyway, I went training and he, he said, yeah, we, we want to sign you. So I was like, wow. Right, well, oh, yeah, <laughs> Australia. Port, Melbourne, you know, it's <laughs> very close. It's a very close. It's a sliding <laughs> doors moment, isn't it? <laughs> It really is, mate. It's a tough call, yeah. Um, but I, I just, I weighed it up and I thought, you know, Australia's not going anywhere. I'll, I'll take this. If it, if it works out, it does. If it doesn't, then I'll get on a flight. And uh, I ended up staying there for about 18 months. Um, and it was, it was an amazing experience. You know, everyone knows how big Stockport is as a club. The fan base, similar to Bury, is, you know, it's immense for the we- conference. Sorry, Harry, were you signed on as a as a, as a semi-pro or were you pro or so county, they were they were semi, they were part-time at the time. I think there was, there was a few lads who were on slightly different contracts, kind of they were in in the mornings, but the majority of the lads were on part-time contracts because yeah, they were still operating as a part-time club then. Um so I still had a job on the side, but yeah, it was it was it was an amazing experience. But it was frustrating at the same time. I didn't, I didn't get anywhere near as much game time as I would have liked. But you know, the lads I was going up against were they were they were quality players. I mean, I think two or three of them are now playing in the football league and stuff. So it shows kind of the levels that were there when I was there. So it was, it was um, there was yeah, plenty of competition for places. I think Stockport have always had, over the, especially over the last three or four years, always had aspirations of moving up those leagues as well. They kind of came down a couple of leagues, didn't they, after they, they came out the Football League, but they always had those aspirations of moving up. And I think they've, you can see now they've started signing a lot of players outside. I think they've even started signing players from Bolton and stuff like that, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, there was the aspirations were there when I was was a player, and it was it was clear to see based on you know the things that were going on the pitch, off the pitch, every all the setup, the the infrastructure there. But now, um, I think it got taken over a couple of years ago, didn't they? And the yeah, yeah, the pile and the money in now, so the money wasn't there. When I was there, but um, yeah, they're, they're going for it. I think. I was I saw I saw the league table the other day just on Twitter and yeah they're flying at the moment so um, yeah I wish them wish them all the best yeah I think they they're a, they are a football league club like Bury do you know what I mean they're, they're massive club massive fan base they need they need to be back back up there really so yeah so yeah yeah um, so so then so did you come away from County kind of a bit disappointed a bit kind of just wanting some football time or. Yeah, so during my spell at, at County, I went on loan to a couple of people, 
couple of clubs. Uh, so I went to I went to Glossop North End for a bit. Uh, then I went to Runcorn Town, um, where I actually it was kind of going from you know thousands of people watching big stadium to Runcorn Town, where there might be hundred people watching in you know not the best uh, pitches and, and grounds and stuff, but. I was loving it. I was playing every week. I was scoring. Um, I, I was loving it. And I kind of weighed it up. I was thinking, well, that's what it's about. That, that's that's why you started playing football, to to enjoy it and be playing. So you need to need to kind of go and find find that again, really. So as 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 um you know, was, I was a bit gutted when when they let me go, but I kind of I, I saw it coming, so I was prepared for it. Um but after they did, I was like, right, well. Where, where can I go and play football? So I actually went back to Runcorn um, and then just, yeah, continued there for a bit. Um, then, and then, and then I got, actually, and then whilst I was there, I was playing well. Uh, the manager of Kefin Druids in the Welsh Prem, he got in touch saying, we want to sign you, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I, I weighed it up and I just thought the travelling, the, you know, all these factors coming into into play. I just, I said thanks, but but no thanks. Um, so yeah, continued there, and then um, then witness in the league above. They came in for me. I thought, yeah, that's that's a bit bit of a better standard. Not too far to travel. I'll, I'll give that a go. So I was at witness for a bit as well. Um, after witness, then druids came in, in. They approached me again. And I wasn't enjoying it. Well, witness, it was kind of, I was in and out of the team. It was, the results weren't going our way. You know, all, all the different factors that, that, that come into football and kind of non, non-league non part-time football. And I thought, you know what? Well, let's give Wel- the Welsh Premier go. It's it's classed as top flight of football. Yeah, if you look at that one. And uh, I think the manager enticed me by, you know, saying that, if we do well, there's a chance you could be playing in Europa League. <laughs> so I was like... From witness yeah. to the Europa League. These sliding door um, moments, Harry, they're, 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 you know, Melbourne, Stockport, witness your Europa I'm, League, you know. I'm all over the show, aren't I? <laughs> um, so, yeah, he said that and, you know, the, the deal that was put on the table was was was, was decent and um, I thought, yeah, go on, let's, let's give that a go. Um Unfortunately, we were we couldn't be further away from the, from the Europa League if we tried. We were, um, yeah, it was a difficult season. That manager got sacked not long after I left. Um, then a new guy came in, and then I actually tore my MCL. Um, yeah, a couple of weeks into him arriving. Um, so yeah, that was that was that. And then, to be fair, if I was going to get injured at any time, that was the time to do it because about a month after that, you know what came around. Yeah, the, yeah, the old. It was world. a good time because it give you plenty of time to kind of well recuperate. You're not missing. You're not really missing out on anything. And um, and the and obviously, you know, it could build your build your fitness back up again. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, it was obviously I never had an injury like that before. Little niggles and whatnot, but um, it was the worst injury I'd had. And the fact that there were no games being played, that no one could do anything. I was literally everyone had their feet up. Everyone was just at home. Um, it, it gave me a chance to fully do rehab and recover. And I was, you know, in, in like the yard, in like my backyard doing, you know, the band work and everything, looking online for, you know, um, rehab moves and all, all that stuff. So I fully, fully did it. Um, and it was, it was fine by the time we kind of got back, got back to playing. Uh, we'd, interestingly, because we were in the, the top flight, top flight football and there were U- European places up for grabs, when a lot of, um, football. I don't know when it where it stopped. Did Conference North carry on? Yeah, up the North. conference. Yeah, it was the Conference North. Uh, I think the North and above carry on. I think it was. I think it was just. I think it was up to. The, I think the Conference North just got to John O. He was at Chester. I think that got canned. I think it was just above the conference. So whatever the okay. national conference. So yeah, they were all playing, and a lot of my mates who have played, you know, similar level to me, and the lads in our team will have will have just been twiddling their thumbs, no football, but because we were. Classed as, you know, I think it was classed as elite. I don't like saying it, but elite sport. 
we actually we continue to train and, and play um, which w- was great for because you know you don't want to stop playing football but for like mentally you know when people couldn't do anything they couldn't do what they wanted to, they couldn't play football or it gave saying. you that level of normality if you like yeah it, it gave gave me normality structure so I just kind of carried on really um, but yeah the results didn't go our way we, we, we yeah we were we didn't have a good season really but because of everything that went on there was no relegation so it was a bit of a um, a bit of a non-season for us anyway but it was nice to, to continue to play football when no one else could so that was uh, that's what, so that would take you up to last season then was that was that your yeah, last season that was the end of last season and then um the travelling really took its toll to be fair whereabouts whereabouts the druids base then the druids so druids is is the best way to describe it is Wrexham basically right, it's, okay. just, it's it's near Wrexham um, so you know I was racking hundreds of miles up on the car and that was just to get to training in home games there was you know away games where four or five hour journeys yeah. um, so it was just, and, and when you're getting beat and you know and you might do a four and a half hour journey and you get yeah. up at 6am to get the and you're on the bench and you get on fat it's like it was um, yeah it, was, it wasn't enjoyable at times so I just said I said listen I'm, I'm going to kind of look to to play a little bit more closer to home really um, so then yeah th- then like at the end of every every season you get I'm sure a lot of the lads will be in the same boat you get managers who have you played for or have seen you or you played against over the years getting messages saying oh what are you doing this season where are you playing what are you plan so just weighing it all up and then uh, the gaffer yeah Andy um, he got hold of my number I don't know how he got hold of my number really but um, well, Andy's got quite a few contacts at Stockport so I don't know whether that's yeah. something that might have come out of it you know yeah, might, it, could, know. it could have been it probably yeah yeah because he was obviously there one of the gaffers so yeah it could, could well have been that um, and he said um, you know what your plans like the other managers did um, we're interested in yeah do you want to come down to training so yeah came down to, to training in the summer and like literally from minute one I'm not just saying this it was loved it I recognised a couple of lads like I, I recognised jo- I knew Jono from over the years and stuff all the lads made me feel welcome and the, the sessions the training sessions were like some of the drills and stuff were, were new and excited and the tempo of it was good and I'd heard of what's going on at the club, the kind of project that, you know, you guys are trying to build. And I thought, yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a bit of that. Um, so, yeah, trained a few times. Then we played a pre-season friendly at uh, Thackley, is it? Yeah, yeah, it would have been, yeah, Thackley. Yeah, then pre-season. Played that, that was my first game. Um, I think yeah I did alright and then the gaffer just yeah pulled me afterwards and said yeah like we, we want to sign you and you know here we are. two minute conversation shook his hand and, and here we are yeah brilliant so um, when you're talking about kind of like the training sessions and stuff um, what is it, is it does it feel like a, a professional environment because you've got obviously got like uh, you got Spence with the goalkeepers. You've got Lenko with you guys doing the fitness stuff. Then you've got the drills with Phil and and Andy. And the quite hands on. Does it feel like kind of quite a professional environment, or similar to what you've seen at Stockport or something like that? Well, definitely without without question, yeah. Um, which is, I was surprised really at how professional it it was and it is. Um, because of you know, it's it's easy to right Barry AFC right what what league they in Northwest Counties. It's like, but it's it's as pre- it's as professional as as it could possibly be. I think anyway, in terms of yeah, the staff spend Phil Lenko, the, the fitness coach, uh, Aidan, the physio, and the gaffer. Yeah, it's they're all kind of got those their little uh, those pockets and looking after certain aspects of the squad, and uh, we all come together. Uh, as as one unit, so yeah, the, on the training pitch, yeah, it's as it's as professional as um, a part time team could be. Um, and then if you're looking at a match day and the fans and the ground and the, you know, all the stuff, that's that is just like you know I experienced at County really. 
Yeah. So what's it like for you and the guys when you when you turn out on a on a Saturday and I know we've not had too many um Saturday afternoon matches because of weather, storms, uh Ratcliffe playing or whatever. But um what's it like when you when you walk out and and there's like 1500 people there or a thousand people away from home? How does that make you feel as a player? Yeah, it's mega mate. It's um that's it is. It's it's class. You know, it's it's the the really get behind. You know, singing the songs, the flags. The you can you can feel it. It's a it's a prop. It's proper support. You know, I played at clubs like I mentioned before. I played at clubs where counted thousands of people. So it's a taste of you know what the the guys you, you watch on the telly. You know, the prem and all. It's it's a taste of that, um, and it, it does. It feels. When you're out there and they're bouncing and you know last minute goal or whatever and you can it it, it feels like the real deal despite us being in the you know the northwest counties it does on the pitch when as a player when you can hear it it's um yeah it feels like the real deal so it's it's class let's talk about your hat trick a bit earlier on in the season then so uh some uh is it was it the perfect hat trick was it left foot right foot and a header as well it was mate uh perfect <laughs> hat tricks not often we can say that so um Tell us a bit. Tell us about that day and how, because you obviously you'd had a bit of time off with injury, mm. and then you kind of came back for a couple, and then you were straight back at it, weren't you? Yeah, it was. Um, so I kind of I had before that game, I had that date in my mind because it was a couple of my mates' birthdays, uh, like a big birthday, and this. Oh, what should we do? And we were going out in town the night that night. But it was about 10 or 12 of them and they said, well, why, why don't we go and watch H in the day as a bit, you know, a bit of a day sesh, a bit of football, like it would be good to do. So I'm thinking, God, if all like 10 of my best mates come, I need to, one, I need to be on the pitch. I need to get back from this injury. And two, I need to do summer else I'll never hear the end of it. <clears throat> so obviously I was injured and had a couple of games prior to, to that game to, I came on for 20 minutes at uh, Liverpool, South Liverpool, kind of had a bit of it, you know, just a bit of a run out to to see how it was. It felt okay. And then I played, it was at Campion actually. Yeah, I played about 55, get a few, got a few more minutes in the tank. Um, and then that that Saturday, I'm thinking, I don't know, lads have been doing all right. I, I, I might be on the bench here and all the lads are there. They'll just be giving me stick. Uh, but anyway, the gaffer, gaffer pulled me and said, yeah, you know, we, you're going to start today. And he actually said, I want you to play a little bit more offensively and I, you know you're a goal scoring midfielder I need you to to get, get in the, the, yeah get forward and get in those uh, those goal scoring uh, positions so I just said yeah no no, no worries and uh, and and did that yeah so it was can uh, we get your mates to come to every game then because they'd be like yeah you, you know an art trick would be nice in every game Harry I mean well, no. honest, have you scored since then? I scored the, I scored the week I scored the, on the Tuesday as well the next game, so I'm thinking, hey, oh, this is uh, me. I'm a centre forward. What was he doing? I'll yeah. leave the line, Nandy. Don't you worry about that. Back off, Greavesy. Back off, Watts. I'm, uh, I'm here. My Watts and Greavesy. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've got it. Um, yeah, scored the next game, and then, um, and then, um, then we had about 18 games postponed. I think. Oh, that was it. Yeah, it was the Blackpool game after that, which we obviously lost. Yeah. So that that kind of gone from up here to boom, first loss of the season. And it well, was, we'll touch uh, on that now. So tell us what was what's because obviously we've had a we, we can't uh, beat around the bush. We've had a little bit of a difficult patch. I think by our standards, there's a difficult patch. Uh, the Blackpool game, I know, was kind of like quite disappointing for for some of the fans, and but I think it gives us a little bit of sense of reality, and it's not any it, these leagues. Despite what you think, it doesn't matter if you just look at Macclesfield in the league above. They don't have easy games. They've lost quite a few this season and dropped a few points here and there. It's not as easy as what everyone thinks it is, is it? You know, just to turn up and we'll steamroll everyone four or five nil. No, it's it's not. Um, and I think yeah, that Blackpool game was yeah. I suppose it was a bit of a reality check. Um, it was just it, it was just one of them day. It's you know you. How often does a team go unbeaten and we're thinking seven games to go, we're gonna we're gonna do it and, and we've lost and it was it at the end of at the end of it in the changing rooms, it was 
it was like the end of the world, you know, because we're not used, we weren't used to it. Yeah. We're not used to it. Um, but it, it, it's happened. Um, and I think touching back on like the fans and the support and stuff, because we've got such great support and, you know, home and away, away teams or the teams we're playing against will up the game. Yeah. So it's where everyone's cup final. We know that. Um, you saw that at Chaddy a couple of weeks ago. I mean, they really, they played really, really well. Exactly the same. Because a lot of those lads, they may or may not, but a lot of those lads, they probably won't have played in front of more than 200 people, two, 300 people. So if we bring three, four times that, you're going to, if I was on the other side, I'd be like, right, well, I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them what I'm about. So it, it's one of them. Like, <laughs> our support's amazing. It won't change it for the world, but we've got to be ready for, for for people or teams to to take it to the next level because they're playing against us. Yeah. Um, and Blackpool Blackpool did that, Chadderton did that. Um, so yeah, it, it happens. It, it happens. I don't think we can get too down about the, the blip in form. Uh, if you're looking at it, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we've lost one game in the league all season. Yeah. Um, if you know, if you were to offer us that at the beginning of the season saying, you've got five games to go, you've only lost one, one game and you're top of the league. Every single one of us said, yeah, well, I've, yeah. Of course you would, he wouldn't. Exactly. So, um, we just got, we've just got to focus on, you know, seeing it out, getting, getting the job done, getting, getting it over the line now, uh, which I've no doubt that we will do. So what's the um, what's the mood like in the in the dressing rooms and at training at the minute? Obviously, you've 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 had this kind of blip in form, but generally, what's the what's the mood like and kind of looking to the to matches that are coming up? We've got a game on Saturday with Garstang, then we've got a uh, a derby. They're all kind of derbies, but yeah. I mean, game against Bay Cup, uh, and then after that, we've got St. Ellen. So, going forward, what's the mood like with the players, and, and how, how are they, how we're going to bounce back to and get back to winning ways? We, do, we know we know what we need to do. The moods, the moods, I suppose it's dropped a little bit because it, it will do if you know, if off the back of a defeat and a draw, it's not going to be the same as off the back of a win, but in terms of um. The mentality of us as a group that's not changed. If anything, it's it's kind of it's it's got us it's geared us up a little bit more. I mean, after after last night's game, I was sat uh, next to Rounds and and Jimmy, and all three of us were like, we we're just having a little chat amongst ourselves, and we we're like, can't wait for Saturday. Like, just yeah, just well, to come round just really kind of up for it just to just to get back to winning ways and just get to, just get a result and then just get that momentum back and then we'll just you know and hopefully just um, just see the season out so yeah the, the, we're, we're up for it we're not you know we're not um, downbeat uh, or no we're not downbeat and I, some people might be looking oh Barry they're having a bit of a wobble they're going to but that's not that's not the, the case at all and I don't I don't me as a player in there I don't sense any of that creeping in um, and you know the gaffer Phil all the all the all the coaches there all you know we're all in it together we're all pulling in the right direction so as the um, um, as the as like the month of February has that had any kind of uh like kind of impact on on the on the players because obviously we didn't play for I think we had like twenty odd days where we didn't play and there was games called off there was a week where we've you know we came back against Darwin and then we've had another Saturday without a game does that inconsistency of games does that affect kind of like the momentum of the of how the team plays Yeah, I mean, I'm not one for making excuses, but if you're looking at it like that. I think it does. I think Feb, Feb has kind of ki it killed us a bit because we lost to Blackpool and then we had to wait like two and a half weeks after, after our first defeat. It's, if you lose a football game, you want to play the next day to, yeah. to be like, right, I'll win that. And, and then it's, you know, the peace is restored. But because we didn't play for like two, three weeks, we've been like stewing on it a bit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the consistency is is key, I suppose. Like you just you want to you know be playing, train, play. So without that, maybe that has 
had an impact on us kind of keeping the form and keeping the momentum going. Maybe it has, um, but it's happened. Um, and, you know, there's, there's no point kind of looking, looking back. We've just got to, we've just got to focus on, on Saturday now and then, you know, well, we'll that's that. it. The good thing is we got a game on Saturday and then it gets back to normal. The weather's going to be a little bit better over the next couple of months. So we're hopefully not going to have any any more games called off and the pitch might be a little bit nicer. Mind you, I looked at a picture of Bay Cup's pitch the other week and it looked like a, it looked like a farmer's field. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but yeah, hopefully that'll uh, we'll have a bit of grass seed down and, uh, and you know, they'll uh, give it a bit of a trim. So... Yeah. Uh, so what about you as a player then? So growing up, who did you support and, and who did you look up to? Who, who were your kind of uh, idols? I, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't ask me this. because You're not going to say the B word, are you? <laughs> Barry? No, the other one. Because you, <laughs> yeah, Bol- you said you're from Bolton, didn't you? Yeah. You're not going to say know, that, that B for Bolton. Yeah, I won't say it. I won't say it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, those right. guys. Um like all football fans or like a lot of football you know my granddad supported them my dad supported them so if you're a proper footy fan you've got to you've got to kind of follow in, in those footsteps I didn't have a choice really um, always got a choice <laughs> you had a choice between Melbourne and Stockport you made a choice yeah uh, yeah that's true I'll never forgive that's you true. that's it well, you'll get pelters. Yeah. you're going to get pelters on Saturday mate that's it that's I know. Well, I'd, I'd rather be honest and not lie. No, you know, no. Then, thank you for being honest. Out, and then, you know. So, yeah. but, but you've got that out of your system. You're not a Bolton fan anymore. You, 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 you've got it all out of your system. You're yeah. firmly connected oh, to the spiritual home of football, which is Berry. <laughs> 100%. I did. I went to, um, I went on a away game. I think it was, I went with Scotty Metcalf at the beginning of the season. I can't remember who the lads were playing. I think I'd, I think I was still suspended, but I thought, I'll, you know, I'll come and, you know, cheer the boys on. And me and Scott got on the bus and I can't, where was it? Miles away anyway. And um, One of the cup thought, games, was it one of the... No, it was early on. It was... Um, oh, when we went up to Alt, uh, up to Cleeter or... Uh, up to oh, Cleeter Moor, yeah. yeah. I was up there and um, so I was in the in the bar with a few of the fans having, having a few pints and stuff and I was speaking to a couple of the fans and they said, oh, look, who do you support, H? And I was just like, oh, Barry. And they were like, no, come on, who do you really support? And I said, I said Bolton and I, oh my God, I wish I hadn't. I wish I hadn't. They were, yeah, fuming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're still here next season, mate, I'll be very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just said City, should I? Yeah, it's just been inclusive. We're all inclusive. Now, uh, we, yeah. we can see that you, everyone can repent for the sins, so it's all right. Yeah. If, 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 the, if, if there's, a, there's a God up there, he will look down upon you and think, you know, for, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope so. And what, I hope about, so. Um, what about idols then? Who did you look up to? Please don't say like Kevin Nolan or someone, but... Uh, <laughs> What uh, what type of what, what idols did you have growing up? Who did you who did you look up to? I'm not going to mention any anything more about that. Yeah. Um, uh, growing up, um, loved Steven Gerrard, loved him as a footballer. Uh, Thierry Henry, at Arsenal side, kind of the invincible side. That was loved. Just I, I used to just watch match of the day just to see what they'd been up to really on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Bergkamp, Henry, all, all those kind of, all those kind of lot. Um, Zidane, obviously. Um, so yeah, how, old are you, how old are you now, Harry? How old are you? So I'm 30. You're 30? Yeah. yeah how are you? I thought you were yeah. a bit younger than that. No, everyone. I got, I've got a baby face. Wish, yeah, I wish yeah. I was. I wish people said, that to me, but they stopped saying that as soon as the grey hair started kicking in. Uh, well, mate, you know. You're 30. Yeah. So what about in your um, in your spare time? What well, in your spare time? In, in when you when you're not playing football, what's your job? You've got quite an interesting job, is that right? So I'm a barber. Yeah. Yes, I'm Which is a... surprising because you've got the longest mane of hair. But, uh, <laughs> so... no, I don't know any good I don't know any good ones, you see. That's why it's not. <laughs> So where, um, where, whereabouts do you want to give us a plug? Whereabouts can we go and get our haircuts? Yes, yeah, say, say, say the word Berry AFC and you get 10% off. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If you're a Berry fan, I'll give you I'll give you 20% off. There you go. Um, so I, li- I live in Altrincham and work just down the road in, in Altrincham. So yeah, it's um, uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's... it's, uh, it's How did you get into barbering? So you, you've gone from semi-professional football, uh, you've gone from uh, uh, university, and now and now you're, uh, now you're a barber. So tell us, uh, how did you get into that? How's that uh, come yeah. about? So I, uh, I've always kind of had an interest, despite my long hair, probably thinking he's never had an haircut in his life. Uh, but before, I did used to have short hair, uh, pretty short, and then... Um, I think it was at uni, really, in Leeds. I, I used to go and get my hair cut at a pretty cool barber shop, and every time I'd, I'd go in and the tunes are on and the, the lad, you know, all that kind of lad's environment, and it was it looked good crack, and I just thought, they look like they're having a good time. And I'm, I suppose I'm quite creative and kind of going down that route. Um, and I just thought I'd... I just thought it'd suit, suit me, really. It's um, basically just listening to tunes, chatting garbage with blokes, mainly about football and, and hopefully making them feel good about themselves. So it's, um, it, it's good. I, lo- I love my job. Um, I think I'm the only barber in the world who don't work a Saturday, though. Because of oh, football. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, <laughs> yeah, yeah, part of that, which, yeah, which my colleagues never, I never hear the end of. Yeah, he's, got another, he's got another game or you have to knock off early on a Tuesday because you've got a hulker, hulker away or something like that. I've got to go at a three or something. Every every time, mate. So camp, camping last night. What? You going? It's like giving it all that and I'm just like, oh, I'm over it now. Can you, but... take, can you take me out of four? Is that all right? It's just that... Uh, <laughs> what's, um, whilst you've been barbering, have you had any... Is there any tales that you could tell us like about like... Is, is there any blokes who've come in who've had like the big kind of comb over he's gone right what I want is I want this cut but I want it kind of like spiked up and you've kind of gone uh, we've we've seen it I've seen it all um, I've seen it all we get car- the, the beauty of, about the job is you don't know who's coming coming through that door um, we get you know I was doing when I was training to be a barber like practicing before I'd qualified I'd have to get um people in off the street basically and as models and yeah. offering for haircuts and stuff. So for months I was actually doing a homeless guy's hair. Yeah. So it was like mm-hmm. literally homeless on the streets. And I said, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do your hair mate if you want, you know, make him fit. So he was really like appreciative and obviously he's got stories like you wouldn't believe. And then the, literally the next person is after, dusted the chair down, he's gone out. The next person in is like a multi, multi-millionaire who's got, you know, yeah. So, so the beauty of that is you, you meet all kinds of people and, um, yeah, and some people are, are after some stupid barnets, I'll tell you that, but you give them what they want. And there's seen a lot of mullets recently, a lot of yeah. mullets coming back. If you'd have seen my hair about six or seven years ago, mate, you'd have you'd yeah. have gone, what are you yeah. doing? What are you doing? You know what? I just I look at Peter now, oh, why didn't anyone have a chat with me then? That's that's life, isn't it? You always look at what you're wearing, what do you look like? It's that's thought it was so um, cool. And then I look back and go, just fell on this short back and sides, that's all I needed. But you know, I've got I've got older and I've got wiser. Yeah. So we had to after lockdown as well. Yeah, because obviously everyone's had their own own little go at it. Either people are shaving, sh- either shave their head off, or they've not touched it at all. So it's kind of one extreme to the or the missus or the brother or the mum or dad had had a go, and it's just like snip here, snip, snip there. there. I heard one guy who said, "Oh, I couldn't get any clippers online, so uh, my missus used the the dog the dog's clippers." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, I've seen it all. Yeah, it's, but I love. Yeah, I love love my job. Yeah, it's it's good. Do any of the lads say to you, "Yeah, Ravi, just bring you bring you clippers in at training on Saturday yeah. or whatever, or, or, or on Tuesday, and I'll just give us a, a shot." Does anyone ask you why? Like, <laughs> for go, but yeah, no. bring it. Just bring it before the game on Saturday. And just give us a quick because I'm going out on Saturday night. Just a, a little trim around the back. They are every every club I've been at. They are, they have said that. But you know we don't have time to do it for the game. What, but during my time in Wales, you know, I was saying we were playing, um, we were still training and yeah. playing. Was, nothing was open. No one could do anything. I actually went, used to set up shop in the changing rooms a couple hours before training, after because the barber shop still weren't open, were they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The so I used to take my clippers to to Wales. 
and, and made a little barber shop in the changing rooms to a bit of cash in hand and uh, to sort the boys out. So tax man will be all over you, mate. We'll shut this down now. <laughs> be, that'll be it. I declared it. I declared it. <laughs> of course. Uh, brilliant, Harry. So what um what more can you can we expect for the rest of the season then for, from the team and what more coming kind of coming to the end now of the of the the the, the season that you know our first season really uh, after last season so what are you hoping for as a player where do you see yourself going in the future and 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 what um and, and what can the fans expect in the last five games yeah i mean it's it is it is crunch it's showtime now. It's you know, there's five to go. We've we've had an amazing season up until this point, or you know, a few weeks before the, the first loss. We've put we've put the graft in, you know, on match days, training every week, turning up, doing the extra stuff in the gym with Lenko. So we just it's a month, a month's worth of football basically, or less than um to go. And we just we just all need to be at it. Um, just giving giving everything we've got to get get the job done and and, and get us over the line. Um, like I said, there's there's no doubt in my mind, and I'm I'm pretty sure I could speak for the rest of the lads. We'll we'll uh, we've got enough in that changing room, enough characters in there, enough experience to 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 do it. So uh, we just need to we just need to switch on and, and focus now. And does having a bit of does having a bit of pressure kind of does that kind of spur you on a bit? If we were like, you know, now now Olka have got a couple of games in hand and does that bit of pressure kind of give you a bit more impetus to kind of move on a bit and like, right, I've re- we've really got to do it from minute one rather than just kind of we're nine points clear, you know, yeah. no one's near us. So do you think that's g- going to gonna galvanise the, the team a bit? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can only speak for myself because people react to, you know, pressure differently, don't they? Um it certainly galvanises me. Yeah, I'm thinking these these guys are breathing down our necks. They think, you know, we're in form. We're gonna, you know, we've got the better running. All, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I love that because yeah. you know we we're we're top we're top of the league, and it's up to us to keep that top spot in the next five games. Um, so yeah, I, I'm. It's it excites me, and um, I. Th- yeah, I think it it will push. It will certainly push me, and I know a few a few others on. But like I said, I can't. I can only speak speak for myself. But I'm I'm hoping that it'll 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 you know psych it all the lads up. The fact that there is that element of pressure on it. And have you got any messages for the fans for Saturday? Any 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 words of of encouragement that you'd like to give them, or any any kind of what what would you like from the fans on Saturday? Just same as always. I don't think I don't think they need encouraging. They, they are they're, they're superb, and I'm not just you know I'm not just saying that they are they're brilliant. They've been brilliant since since I arrived. Um, you know, every week when we played, you know, those midweek games in the middle of nowhere. I can't think of a fixture, you know, off the top of my head, but. You're thinking we're in the changing rooms, and you, you put your boots on, you go out, and you think. You think, oh, there won't be that many there tonight. And there's like hundreds, hundreds of you guys, and you, you know, and I will always, all of us will we'll give it one of them because we really do appreciate, you know, the time and effort you, you put in um, to, to coming down, spending your money, traveling to, to watching us. Um, and it, it doesn't it doesn't go unnoticed, believe you me. Yeah, it's, it is superb. So hopefully you can uh, keep coming for the next five games and then. On that last day of the season, we'll we'll have some to really cheer about. Brilliant! Thanks very much, Harry. Cheers for your time, pal. A big thank you there to Harry Brazel for his time. Thanks very much. Very positive interview there, I thought. And hopefully we can get back to winning ways against Garstang on Saturday. Don't forget, if you're under 16, you can go to that game for nothing. It will cost you no English pounds. You just need to go to our website, www.berryafc.uk to find out more details about how you can get a free ticket to that game. Uh, the women are also in action this Sunday against Mosley at Seal Park. Uh, you can find out more information again on the website or on our social media. And don't forget, if you haven't already, you can uh, now vote for our home kit, um, which has been very, I've seen a lot of very controversial um 
tweets online uh, about some of the designs. Uh, I'm more of an F guy. I like the F. Uh, I like the uh, the design around the collar and at the back. Um, but some people are saying, no, no, I'm more of a B guy. I like the B. I the keep it simple. You can make a decision. It's your club. So if you are a member, go to your emails, have a look, and you can have your say at what Berry AFC will be wearing next season in uh, for their home games. Uh, but until next time, hopefully sooner rather than later, on the Shaking Up show, we'll see you soon. Goodbye.